So that's when I told uh, Shantala Madam in that there is there are some five G training offered by industry leader like Qualcomm, which is available at free of cost. Are the students aware of? It? There is there are so many free programs that are available. And since we work with Qualcomm, Qualcomm told us saying that. How can you take this to the engineering institute and create this awareness? Saying, you know, they can take these programs. They are ready to give, right? When I started going to colleges, first of all, students are, you know, they find it difficult to go through the syllabus. They find it difficult to go through their own exam and test. Why should I study something extra? That is why my first slide talks about this. Why should I study something extra? Okay, this is not, this news is not created by me. This is by industries, you know, industry did some research, market research about what is going to be the situation. The biggest challenge for industry today, trust me, is they don't, they think that we have a, we have shortage of talent. On the other side, we think that we have enough talent, but there are no job opportunity. This is the biggest problem. So, India will need some, so many millions of people to work on 5G. 5G may have another 5-10 years of lifetime and then 6G will come. But to work on 6G, should I should have some basic knowledge of 5G. So, it's a continuous journey that if I know 4G, I can build on it and become 5G expert. If I am no 5G, I can build on it and become 6G expert. After my engineering, my first interview was with Airtel. Okay, my brother was in the industry. I never knew all my classmates went for software engineering. I am, you know, I could not, I, come, I actually uh, studied in Kannada medium till 10th. And then, uh, you know, how, uh, you know, in PU, we somehow managed to, uh, you know, cross PU and did engineering. I had no confidence in attending interviews. So I never got through any of my uh, interviews in campus. But after I came out of college, uh, university, my brother told, okay, attend some interviews where I have contacts, I went and then I did all that. So my first interview was with Airtel. They asked me only one question. They said, if you answer this question, we will give you a job. Airtel was working on 2G that time. Airtel said, uh, the interviewers asked me, from phone till the base station, we all know tower, right? In layman language, we call it as tower. But transmitter and receiver. Okay. Transmitter and receiver is called transmitter station. You have all seen what is visible to bare eyes is base station to all of us. Beyond that, what is happening, probably you are not aware. They asked me how the when you talk, because that is 2G time. When you talk, what happens? How your voice is transmitted from your phone to station? If you explain this, we will take it. I said, Do you think this is not there in our syllabus? No, they said, you know, this is the first thing, right? You have to defend yourself. So I said, uh, this is, uh, you know, uh, they said, you have studied this in your engineering, digital modernization, you have, digital communication, you have studied, antenna theories, you have studied. Electromagnetic field theory, beast, you have studied, right? You know, right? All these subjects are there. You have to just put all of them together and explain. Basically, you have to apply what you have studied. Then you will be able to, you know, explain. Because in wireless environment, whether it is 2G, whether it is 3G, whether it is 4G or 5G technologies, the real technology is between mobile and base station. Trust me. After the base station, after the tower, everything is fixed. After the tower, everything else is fixed. For example, you access YouTube. Let's say you access YouTube on your phone. Professor asked, all of us use mobile handset, correct? So all of us use mobile handset. 
so it becomes easy for us to relate whatever we discuss so if you access youtube after the base station till youtube server everything is fixed there is no mobility base station is fixed controllers are fixed switching and routers are fixed youtube servers are fixed they are in fixed location and they can all be connected to optical fiber the real wireless is between mobile and base station basically when we talk about wireless network wireless is last mile rest of the network is wired rest of the network is wired so the real charging area in wireless network is between mobile and base station this is where the technology has grown from 2g to 3g 4g to 5g now 6g so beyond base station researchers are not worried much anyway i have optical fiber it's like 10 lane highway my real problem is mobile to base station so if you really look at the difference between 2g 3g 4g 5g the real difference is here could be bandwidth way we transmit and receive the modulation schemes that we use coding schemes that we use power control schemes that we use you know interleaving schemes that we use is all you know here so airtel was expecting me to answer all this i did not they said okay thank you that day i decided i will have to now study differently if i get back to engineering today i will not study for marks i am ashamed to say actually i was top of for bangalore university when i did my engineering okay the second best was 7% lesser than me but i would say i was the most fool in the way i studied engineering because the way we study engineering is for marks is for uh, you know and finally get a job there is nothing wrong in this you know approach but i feel at least after you know going through this much i feel i would have done engineering much better i had a classmate who was in electrical engineering he was crazy about engineering i was not i took engineering for a job he was crazy about engineering he hardly he, you know he found it very difficult to pass today he has developed his own electric two wheeler he has developed his own electric two wheeler because he studied engineering from a different perspective are you there with me so the point that i am trying to say is if many of you are from electronics and communication you have already studied probably digital communication basics analog communication basics antenna theory electromagnetic field theory it's only matter of putting all of them together and say oh this is 3g this is 4g this is 5g some minor changes maybe they would have gone for 16 qom to 64 qom modulation that's all anybody would say what is the difference between 4g and 5g can you tell me what is the difference between 4g and 5g based on your experience speed right auto driver will also say if i ask auto driver he will also say then what is the difference between me and auto driver right it is beyond these things what is that beyond these things latency error control schemes forward error correction hybrid arq handover techniques in 4g in 4g most of us i am sure all of us are using 4g at least in 4g when i move at 350 km per hour if my vehicle moves till that point they have supported handovers that means doppler effect they have taken care fast fading they have taken care slow food fading they take care because in the wireless environment if you are static the impact of channel is lesser if you are moving the channel impact is different so as i move faster channel impacts are different so there are a lot of things like this as i said fast fading delay fading low slow fading and all that so in 4g they could manage all these problems only 
if the vehicle is moving up to 350 km per hour. But Indian scenario, no vehicles be, move beyond 350. But in foreign countries, there are bullet trains going at 500 km per hour. So if I am sitting in, if I am in Japan, if I am in China, there could be bullet trains going at 400 km per hour, 500 km per hour. Bangalore, uh, Tumkur, they go in just 30 minutes. So that is how they commute there. So when they sit in the train, they will switch on YouTube and watch. The user need not worry how the technology is working. User need not worry. He is just expecting his YouTube to be working without interruption till he reaches home. So if your vehicle is going at 400 kilometers per hour uh, uh, at that speed, then my handovers will not work in 3G, in 4G. 5G said, I think we should find out how do we overcome the impact of radio or RF waves if the vehicle is going at 500 km per hour. So in 5G, they support speed up to 500 km per hour. One. So at least from now onwards, if you sit in an auto or a bus or somebody, if they ask you what is the difference between 4G and 5G, you should tell us. We support handover up to 500 km per hour if the vehicle is moving, right? Base station to mobile. Whenever base station says, hey, the, you are sitting inside the building, you should not be using 16 core modulation. With 16 core modulation, there will be error. You should go to the most safest modulation scheme. Base station will tell the mobile because I am inside this building. When the signal goes through, Wireless signal goes through, it will hit this wall, it will hit trees, and then it will reach the base station. So it is not a very good channel condition. It is not a very good channel. If I walk out of this campus and stand in that ground, then I can see the tower, my mobile and base station talk to each other, saying that, wow, this is a great condition. There are no obstacles in between. Are you there with me? Do you know all these things happen between mobile and base station? You may not be. Because I am a user, as on today I am a user. I don't care what mobile and base stations are discussing with each other. This is happening without my knowledge. This is happening without my knowledge. Do you know how often it happens? Just to, you know, bring that curiosity, that 4G phone that you are using in your pocket, thousand times in a second. How many times? thousand times in a second that means for every one millisecond it will tell the base station is the power good enough that i am casting is the modulation scheme and coding scheme that i'm using is it good enough should i change can you give me feedback we call it a cqi feedback channel quality indicator this is what is technology in 2g it was once in 50 milliseconds in 3g we brought it down to 20 milliseconds HSPPA, HSPA, H plus you get sometimes on your phone. Have you seen H plus and all that? Near that signal bar, H, H plus, then LTE, all that. They moved it to 2 millisecond. Now they brought it down to 1 millisecond in 4G. In 5G, in 5G, mobile has capability to give feedback to base station saying that I am not able to receive data proper. Can you change your transmission technique? How often? 0.5 millisecond, 0.25 millisecond, 0.125 millisecond, 0.0625 millisecond. For mission critical, you know, for mission critical applications, we might need that kind of approach. The point I am trying to tell you is speed is the most basic thing that we have solved. Speed is not the only thing. Speed is the most basic. People say, hey, this is what is visible to us. But the real thing is the change in technology. Trust me, from 2G to 3G when they upgraded, one of the biggest challenge for mobile operators, if you look at yesterday's news, okay, if you look at yesterday's news, mobile operators have to buy license for frequencies that they use. Okay, they have to buy licenses, right? And one megahertz license costs about 6,000 crores today. One megahertz license. So, if they have 
hundreds of base stations for Tumkur. For hundreds of base stations, they have to buy frequency. That means they have to invest lakhs of crores to build the network. So 2G basically started with GSM. I'm just taking you from, you know, just to give you history and take you to 5G. What really changed? 2G, one of the major problem was operator had to buy for every base station new frequency. For every base station new frequency. Do you all use FM? Do we all use FM? What is the frequency for FM? What is the frequency for FM radio? Come on, we all tune manually. At least you should know these numbers. 98.3 megahertz, 95 radio mirchi, whatever we see, right? So you do you know what is the frequency for mobile network? We don't know because mobile is automatically tuning. That is why I am ignorant. I don't try to understand because mobile is tuning. You are not manually tuning. So for GSM, it could be 900 megahertz, 1800 megahertz. For 3G base station, it could be 2100 megahertz. For 4G base station, it could be 2.3 gigahertz. Wi-Fi, what frequency you use Wi-Fi? You see now when you scan Wi-Fi, what do you see? 2.4 gigahertz or 5 gigahertz. First of all, please open up, okay? Don't, I am not here to assess anybody. I am not here to evaluate things. You all speak up, ask questions. This is the place you should ask. When I was studying uh, my management studies, my professor told me that if you have a question and if you don't ask, you will be fool for lifetime. If you have a question and if you ask, you might look like a fool for some time, for others. But I am not as a fool, even if it is a very small question. So, 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 so yeah. that's a basic question. That yes. How many we use 5G, right? right yeah. Now? So, in my place, I have 4G. Yeah. But I am not able to see 4G in my phone. I can see only 8G, not the navigation. So yeah. Maybe what is the reason why can't I access 4G? See, 4G is a generation of technology. See what has happened, ITU, International Telecommunication Union, has defined certain technology under category of 2G. 2G, any technology, wireless technology on which I can transmit voice, I will call it as 2G. Any wireless technology which can transmit voice, I will call it as 2G. Any wireless technology which will carry two Mbps data. I will call it as 3G. Two Mbps data between mobile and base station. Any wireless technology, if it carries 100 Mbps, I will call it as 4G. Tomorrow, I and C, you sit in the lab and develop a technology and go and tell ITU saying that, I see that in this wireless technology, I am able to transmit 100 Mbps. This technology also qualifies to be 4G. I will name that technology as Gubbi technology. Are you there with me? Which means worldwide operators have the choice whether I should use 4G or whether I should use uh, whether I should use LTS. LTE is one of the technologies which will support 4G. Why Max was there? So, Indian operators may say, hey, this is developed in India, let me, for 4G network, let me use Gubi technology. Are you there with me? So, operators are, when they are, you know, deploying 4G, worldwide today, they have formed a geopolitical consortium. Any operator who are using 4G should use LTE, that's all. Because when you develop a technology, you have asked a very good question. The biggest challenge is in technology, there is a lot of politics. One of my friends, government of India is supporting Atmanirbhar, you know, right? What is that they are trying to do? Any technology that we buy has to be Indian. Try and make it Indian. You are using Samsung, I am using Samsung, somebody is using Apple, somebody is using some other. Where is Indian product? There is Indian product. Lacks of crores of rupees we invest. That money goes to other countries. 
where is indian product so most of our handsets are android based android based that is the operating system the moment i use android based google has my data i tell my son we give him phone for one hour per day whatever you do if you don't tell i will check with google i will get it from them you are because google has complete history of what i am doing right so government of india said from the country security perspective we should have our own operating system for the phone we should have our own operating system we should not depend on somebody's operating system because all of us we just accept agree install that's all upgrade agree install so they gave this task to iit madras they have a communication said saying we need to develop our own operating system a technology called bharat os bar os is developed by one of my friends called kartik ayer okay he lives on top of kodakkanam hill he is a crazy guy technologist he basically foreign educated came back phd so he developed an operating system a broadband technology also is developed for country our country trying government is trying to use that so bar os he developed lava phones now what you are you buy lava phones lava there is a brand right lava phones that you buy 500 phones they are released on test basis with bar os 2022 in our wireless conference he said developing a bar os is a challenge we need people who can you know contribute to this so 2023 december by that time bar os was developed that time he told one year what i learned to push a product or a technology it is 98% politics 2% technology which means he has developed a technology which is finding it difficult to sell it is geopolitics google will not allow you to grow facebook will not allow you to are you there with me the same thing gubbi technology even if it is better than lte i will have to fight with global conglomerates i will have to fight with qualcom i will have to fight because qualcom has developed patents for for the they will they have you know with the itu they are so you know you know, i i cannot tell all that so you understand right so 4g doesn't mean only lte lte is all black things are not pros are you getting me so the point that i was trying to say when you have so many one last point just to give you an idea when we have so many towers for every tower if i have to buy frequency implementing a commercial network will be very very costly commercial network means as and you all these guys they find it difficult because they have to buy license for frequency for every base station then came cdma then came cdma in the world qualcom developed this technology and told qualcom told qualcom r&d engineers saying that we need to develop a mobile technology wireless technology which will use the same frequency in every tower which will use the same frequency in every tower gsm said every tower should use different frequency why as its frequency is my forefathers property frequency is a natural resource gsm came and said every tower should use different frequency why will i get cdma technology when they developed qualcom said we have to find ways to use same frequency in every tower what is the what is the challenge if we use same frequency in every tower co channel interference adjacent channel interference so many cross talks all that qualcom said nothing doing find a solution nothing doing find a solution trust me they spent so many years in this you know finding out how can we use so many r and d engineers jumped out of their building in qualcom said here trying to find a 
solutions. It is at that cost today we are using technology. Today, all technologies what we are using 3G, 4G, 5G, base is CDMA. Because same frequency reuse is a boon for operator. It's a boon for operator. Operators are saying, wow, what a technology I can reuse if I, for example, Karnataka, when I was planning mobile network for Karnataka 21 years back, Karnataka had about 6,000 base stations for one operator. What of 6,000 base stations? Imagine for 6,000 base stations if I had to buy different frequencies. Anyway, in a 2G, 3G, we have some frequency reuse concept. Whatever frequency I used in Bangalore, I can reuse it in Kumpur. That means I don't have to buy 6,000 frequencies. I have to buy at least some amount of frequency. CDMA came and said, killed it. Say, same frequency reuse. How do we solve interference? They have so many new techniques. Pre-coding schemes, scrambling codes. They have so many techniques. This is where the technology is different from one to another. Not data. Data rate is for the users to enjoy. The real change in technology is how did we solve? See, coding scheme. You know coding scheme? Have you heard of coding scheme? Basically, it is very simple. One of my friends who used to work with ITU came back to India recently. He said, engineering subject has to be easier for students to learn. They should not find it difficult. From that perspective, he wrote a book without mathematics. Engineering subject, he wrote a book without mathematics. Coding scheme means what? When I transmit digital data, digital data is 0 and 1. When I transmit data to base station, there are so many obstacles. The chances of error is high. It is not a pipe. It is not optical fiber. It is wireless environment. So when data is received by the receiver, what is the guarantee that data is received 100% perfect? What do you think? If there might be error. Maybe the receiver has decoded 0 as 1, 1 as 0. This is error. That's all. Okay. Coding scheme, what do we do? At the transmitter side, in order to overcome error, I do some additional packaging. I do additional packaging. If Obama is coming, 10 people are behind him. Security. Are you like, you know, you get it. Same thing here, when I transmit one information bit, one zero, maybe multiple other zeros and ones I add to protect the main bit. Are you there with me? This is the this is basically in wireless communication. We call it as coding. If I transmit instead of one bit, if I transmit three bits. Two bits will act as protection. Okay, we call this as one by three coding. For instead of sending one bit, I said three bits. This is one by three coding. If the base station is very close to me, I am my mobile, I am on top of the building where tower is there. You can be on top of the building where tower is there. What is the chance of losing data? Less. If I am in basement of that building or if I am away from the building what is the chance that when I transmit error, you know you will have error more correct so coding scheme says if you are closer to the base station chance of error is less don't add so much of protection if you are away from the base station if you are away from the base station protection required is as simple as that they will call 1 by 3 coding, 1 by 5 coding, 1 by 8 coding. 1 bit has 2 protection, 1 bit has 4 protection, 1 bit has 8 protection. All these are introduced in CDMA. Till GSM, 1 by 8, 1 by 8, 1 by 8. When you are nearby, why 1 by 8? If I am handing over my phone here only, why should I put plastic cover, everything? Receiver is here only. Are you there with me? If I have to courier it to Bangalore, then I will do proper protection. It is the same thing. I am just, you know, it's just uh, uh, at a 
thousand feet level I am talking, but we can get into details. The point is, organizations want electronic engineers to have this idea. You learn coding, you learn modulation, you learn antenna, you learn all that. So anybody, so anyone, anyone here can tell me when we convert voice into digit form, when we convert voice into digit form, how many digits will be there? Voice is an analog signal. How many digits will be there? Imagine this is mobile. If I talk, when my voice reaches the base station, when my voice reaches the mobile, mobile will send my voice. My voice is in what form? Come on. Huh? First is analog form. Very good. After reaching the base station, after reaching the phone, what it does? Converts into digital. Finally, digital information goes from my mobile. Correct? Whether it is voice, whether it is picture, whether it is a movie, whatever it is, what is going out of your hands, it is digital. That is zero and one. If I speak, how many zeros and ones? If I send video, how many zeros and ones? If I send a picture, how many zeros and ones? At least, do you get my question? Which one will need more zeros and ones? Video. If I send a voice, less picture, maybe in between. Are you there with me? So, 2G, 3G, 4G, 5G technologies are designed for higher data rate because you can send video. Because you can, because they need, you know, you understand this, right? So, from the technology perspective, from the technology perspective, they have found out what is the number of bits that we transmit when the user is using picture, when the user is using voice. So why do I need to know all that? Chip companies, whenever you buy phone today, Qualcomm says, Qualcomm Snapdragon. Have you heard? Snapdragon, have you heard? MediaTek or somebody else will say what chip this is the chip which will do all this tomorrow if qualcomm is coming and hiring they will ask you oh when voice is converted into bits how many bits will be there pcm pulse code modulation you have learned right pulse code modulation we have learned and things like that so the point is technology in the air interface between mobile and base station technology is evolved over a period of time how they transmit data how voice is transmitted how data is transmitted what is the protection we use what is the handover scheme we use error correction what we use a lot of things like that so let me actually you know take you through there are you know where is the real opportunity for various uh, job roles in the industry so let me take you from my objective was to just to cover from GSM to 3G, 4G and up to 5G. I wanted to give you an idea. Any mobile network architecture is same. What is architecture? Any mobile network architecture means what? You will have a base station. Can you by looking at the tower, can you say whether it is 2G, 3G, 4G? You can't look at my base station and say it is 2G, 3G, 4G base station. What it is transmitting and what it is receiving, transmitter and receiver, they are 2G, 3G, 4G based. The way they transmit, the way they receive, this is what is 2G, 3G, 4G based. Are you there with me? So, 2G started to transmit voice. 2.5G allowed users to turn. I remember during my time, to upload a resume, to, it used to take one hour because data rate was few kbps. Today, how much data rate you are all getting? Huh? Mbps. So I can quickly do because technology is changed. So whenever a new technology comes, an operator is expected to put a new transmitter near the tower. He has to have a new transmitter there. I have to have a new mobile. Only then the new technology works. Right? Otherwise, my older phones, you can't upgrade to 5G. Your older phone, if it is 4G, it will work on 4G. 
it is ready to work on 3g and ready to work on 2g because those are all older technologies so when a new technology comes operator has to put the new tower you have to buy a new handset then the technology will work beyond base station mobile network architecture is almost same whether it is 2g 3g 4g or 5g network architecture remains same the real difference is where between transmitter and receiver here only is the real difference between 2g 3g 4g if i make a voice call from here to bangalore nearby base station it will go base station has some controller it's like professor hod principle it's like that network also has like that there are so many base stations then there is one base station controller then many base station controllers they all get connected to in between a switching center routing center and then the call goes through like that to bangalore and again in bangalore there is a switching and routing center and then it goes to controllers then it goes to last base station and then it goes to the user so the mobile network architecture from mobile to the other side whether it is 2g 3g 4g or 5g architecture is almost same the real difference is transmitter receiver another major difference in 2g 3g 4g another major difference is latency what is latency in 4g you watch ipl match in 4g you watch live ipl match now women's ipl is going going on right live ipl match when i broadcast from chinnaswamy stadium in bangalore and to your mobile live in the network there is some delay hence when you watch a live match even though it is live there is a one ball difference there is a one ball difference in the field next ball would have been already bowled what you are seeing is previous ball are you there with me this depends on how fast every component in the network is processing my data and sending it how fast so 2g 3g technologies are not defined for life they are not defined for life in 2g 3g if i try to do live there will be enough gap between live and real watch what 4g we have a difference of 10 millisecond how many 10 millisecond 10 millisecond difference you will not and this is one second this is one second 10 millisecond is very little so in but processing takes so much time and you will have one millisecond uh, you know one ball difference 5g is designed for one millisecond latency how much you will see real time services real time services. so 5g apart from data rate what is the other improvement latency very good latency 5g the apart from data rate latency the question is how did they do it that is where the real crux is what did they do between base station and mobile what did they do whenever i want to do something in uplink network has to allocate me bandwidth when you ask how quickly network is responding to you in 2g it took 600 milliseconds in 3g we brought it down to 100 milliseconds in 4g we brought it down to 10 milliseconds in 5g we brought it down to 1 millisecond how much that means whenever you ask network saying that i want bandwidth network was responding in 1 millisecond in what technology 5g now i can do connected car because connected cars require that kind of response time if i go to somebody if they respond immediately then the way we communicate will be different if i go to somebody and ask for something you say amelba then the way we deal is different so for connected car for connected health care for all that 
the response time from the network has to be quick. So what did we do in 5G? We brought the latency to one millisecond. How did they do that? Is the question. What did they do in my handset? What did they do at the base station? This curiosity, if you have, you will understand EMF, electromagnetic field theory better, digital communication better, all that. Are you there with me? This is where they brought changes. This is where they brought changes. Like this. Now on the network side, on the network side, base station is there. Base station controllers are there. Switching and routing networks are there. Ultimately, to find out whatever you do, where it has to be sent. You upload a picture. You upload a picture on WhatsApp. You send a WhatsApp, to, you know, on WhatsApp, you send a picture. From your WhatsApp application, data has to go to base station. From base station to base station controller, to switching and routing network. Switching and routing network in the network, in the mobile network, has to decide where is the WhatsApp server? Where is the WhatsApp server in Tumkur? Is the WhatsApp server is in Tumkur? For Asia Pacific, they may have in Singapore. Or looking at Indian population, they may have in one place in India. So the switching and routing network in Tumkur has to send your data to WhatsApp server. Let's say it is in Delhi. It has to go to Delhi. That means one side of transmission is done. The picture what you wanted to send it to your friend has gone till Delhi. And at Delhi WhatsApp server, they have to find out where is the target user to whom I have to send this picture. Again, there is a path, route to mobile network, mobile network, or you know, switching and routing network, controller, base station, and finally the other end user is getting it. How quickly it is coming? Have you seen this? Right? So Things have changed drastically in recent technologies. You will have to think there is an optical fiber communication there, microwave communication there, software defined networking, quick routing and switching is happening. They are all doing a lot of things on the network side. Are you there with me? The point that I am trying to say under one base station, under one tower, how many people can talk or how many people can do data transmission? Huh? Under one tower, how many people can do data transmission? Depending on the cell region. Depend on the cell region. If the user density is high, tomorrow, now Lok Sabha election is coming. Let's say you are you have a gr big ground in your college campus. Political party will come and say, Can I use your campus for, for doing one rally? That day, 10,000 people come. Uh, 10,000 people will come. The base station which is installed near to your college campus was used to seeing some 3,000, 4,000 people earlier. Suddenly for that day, it has 14,000 people. Do you think my base station capacity is good enough? So, in under every base station, do we have fixed number of users? No, people keep moving, right? So in the mobile network, biggest challenge is capacity under one base station. How much to give? Operators are confused. How much, how many users are there? 10 minutes back, so many users were there. Once the college bus goes, suddenly base station is empty. All have gone home. Are you there with me? So operators have a challenge under one base station, under one tower. How many people will be there at a given point of time is a challenge. Can the base station capacity, can it be flexible? Can it be flexible? That means, can it increase its capacity when it is needed? Can it reduce its capacity when it is not needed? This was not there up to 4G. This was not there up to in 5G, it has a self-assessment, self, it only looks at, oh, how many people are there under this base station? Let me increase my capacity. Oh, you number all of them have left the campus. Let me reduce my, how can we now bring that flexibility in base station 
bring that flexibility in the network how can we do that now we can bring that flexibility and elasticity only if we use cloud technology only if we use cloud technology so in the mobile network till 4g we never used cloud mobile network had a fixed capacity it could neither neither go down nor increase in 4g after 4g advanced and up to 5 now 5g entire network is built on cloud technology entire network is built on cloud technology the cloud technology gives you biggest benefit is as you want more processing as you want more memory immediately you can buy it. you can you know you can vary elasticity so in the mobile network what if we do in 5g is it has the self improved capacity self reduced capacity techniques now for that we will have to implement in the network machine learning in the network intelligence what is the intelligence required in the base station base station has to look at oh just now i was 50% loaded now it is 60% loading now it is 70% loading now base station is thinking based on the predictive theory it is thinking that i will soon touch 100% are you there with me so the the base station itself has to study this earlier during my time manually used to check oh under this base station so many people are making call let me increase capacity manually when you check already so much of gap is there after 2 hours we the base station generates report how many users are there you will not get immediately after 2 hours base station will generate report saying that at 8 o'clock so many users were making call that report i will get at 10 o'clock are you there with me so at 8 o'clock what happened under the base station if i get the report at 10 o'clock my reaction and my correction will happen another 2 hours by the time all the crowd has gone at 8 o'clock if it has happened at 8 1 i have to know at 8 2 i have to do correction are you there with me so that at 8 5 people made calls none of them saw network is busy everybody got capacity are you there with me hence all my customers were happy are you there with me so this was not there in course this is all in phasing now at 8 1 i had to understand means it is not human base station itself is studying based on the how much data is coming under the base station it itself is studying so if base station itself is studying we call it as machine learning humans are not intervened it we call it as machine learning machine itself is learning oh this is what is happening under me based on my learning what i should do should i increase capacity or reduce capacity you have learned but you have to act now what you should do that is called artificial intelligence so we brought all these things to base station base station controller base station uh, switching and routing centers so that the entire network does everything on its own so to work in 5g do you know cloud they last earlier till 4g we don't need to why because all the system in 4g network and 3g network they had fixed computing capability they had fixed memory their capacity was fixed in 5g network has its own network has its own learning it can be flexible it can increase decrease that means for machine learning we use python they will say oh you know machine learning but do you know python are you there with me we use python then they say oh on the cloud side you need to know hypervisor you need to know various things cloud technology fundamentals what is cloud how do we you know how cloud architecture is how do we you know lot of things related to cloud which means during my time software engineering knowledge was not required for working in 
working in telecom. For telecom, you need to just have knowledge of RF, modulation, coding, all that for telecom network. Now, to work in telecom, you need to have knowledge of RF, knowledge of communication theory on the network side, cloud, and all these technologies are built using C on a Linux product. So, C Linux. All these technologies are used extensively. Hence, nowadays, when they hire freshers, just now I completed one training for a company called Dish Networks. 70% of the participants are from computer science background. 30% are from electronics. People who come from electronic background are also good in program. There is none. Now I can't say wireless technology is just communication theory. It is a combination of software engineering and hardware engineering, embedded system on the mobile side, chipset side. So if you look at 5G, if we look at 5G, 5G is a different beast altogether. Many of us think 5G is designed for connecting people. Connect. How many of you don't have mobile? Don't. Everyone is having mobile, correct? The reason I am saying is worldwide, we have provided connectivity to people. That we have already users are connected on the mobile. They are all having data connectivity. So, Mobile operators are saying, I am unable to sell any more new SIM cards. Everybody having connection. Where is my growth? Geo, Airtel, all these operators in the world are saying, I am unable to sell any more SIM cards. I am not required. Everybody is having SIM card. Everybody is now connected to data. Then what will I do? So operators are saying, I need a mobile network which will connect to car, which will connect to street light. I need a mobile network which will connect to parking sensor. I need a mobile network which will connect to ambulance. Which means till now, the mobile technology is designed for people. Till now, mobile technology is designed for people. Can I have mobile technology which is designed for connecting machines? Connecting machines. This desk is connected to 5G network. This chair is connected to 5G network. Anything that you see is connected to 5G network. What is the use? Now, principal room, he can identify how many chairs are empty, how many chairs are full. No need to take attendance. Are you there with me? This, if it is connected to 5G network, any point in the world, people can see in this conference room how many people are sitting. I can have a weight sensor built into it. The weight sensor will say whether something is there on the chair or not. And connect this to 5G network. Anywhere in the world, people can see where in this conference room, how many people are sitting. Are you there with me? Shantala Madam, who lives, uh, who is in Bangalore in the same apartment complex where I live. She can see how many students are there. So for that, I don't need to take attendance to see how many are there. The biggest 5G, one of the 5G use cases is connected ambulance. Connected ambulance. Now you know all these highways, what kind of accidents occur. You know, as per, as per research, market research, accident victims die because the, they miss the golden hour treatment. What is golden hour treatment? Do you know what is golden hour treatment? Do you know what is golden hour treatment? Do you know what is accident? Here, yes. you know. Yeah. Golden hour treatment is whenever accident occurs, within one hour treatment should start. That first one hour after the accident is called Golden up. If there is a doctor's intervention and treatment, chances of survival is 
more. The problem is today accident occurs. Ambulance comes probably after 30 minutes. Then the ambulance reaches the hospital in maybe in 20 minutes or 30 minutes. You have already lost golden hour. Are you there with me? Once the patient reaches hospital, can the treatment start, start or should I do the diagnosis first? We should first do the diagnosis. We should find out what is the real problem. What has happened? And then the treatment with 5G network. With 5G network, what they have done? The ambulance drivers are given smart gloves. Ambulance drivers are given smart gloves. From the time I go to an accident spot, from the time I go to an accident spot as an ambulance driver, I touch the accident victim. It is sensing many things from his body. What? Smart gloves, what he is wearing, is already sensing many things from the person's body and it is 5G connected. The gloves is 5G connected. If it is 5G connected, doctor sitting in the hospital can start diagnosing the patient from the time when the doctors can start diagnosing the patient. From the time ambulance driver touches the patient, are you there with me? So my diagnosis starts from the time the ambulance driver is there in the location. But in the in the gloves, smart gloves, how many sensors I can put? There is a limitation. The moment you put the accident victim on the stretcher in the ambulance, in the ambulance there is a stretcher. The entire structure is built with all sensors, X-ray, X-ray machine in the structure. Everything is there. Only thing is, if the structure does all the sensors, you know, if it does, how do we see 5G network connectivity? There is one hospital in India has ordered 100 smart 5G ambulances. One hospital, they are doing now trial, 100 smart 5G ambulances. What their advertisement is, our diagnosis will start from the time ambulance driver reaches the, ambulance driver reaches the accident spot. So, as the patient reaches hospital, doctor has done all the diagnosis. The stretcher, the smart, Close has given me all the input that I need. Maybe stethoscope is also built into my ambulance structure, everything. All that I needed was a reliable mobile network connectivity. As the ambulance is going, my 5G network is giving me all the data from the stretcher, which is actually sensing all the things of the patient. As the patient reaches hospital, treatment starts. Are you there with me? Because I have done everything. Why this is possible? Because in 5G network, we have 1 millisecond latency. 1 millisecond, with 1 millisecond latency, if I measure heartbeat, I will not have variation of data. With the 10 millisecond, with the 50 millisecond latency, if you measure heartbeat, stretcher is measuring, and then it is sending the heartbeat data to the doctor sitting in the hospital, Heartbeat measurement is not proper because there is how much millisecond latency? 10 millisecond or 50 millisecond. 5G says my network can process data faster and send it to the dead, you know, other end within one millisecond. Now you do real time monitoring. Now I can do real time monitoring. Are you there with me? So at the gloves, there is some computing. At the stretcher, there is computing. You are, cannot just integrate sensors just like that. Sensors have to be integrated. Sensor has to process the data, how to represent the data. And then that has to be connected to 5G chip in the gloves, 5G chip in the structure. And it has to transmit the data on 5G network. And somewhere in the hospital, doctor is able to see what is going on in the ambulance. Are you there with me? Only then, 
I can start treating. In fact, new stretchers have come where it has all critical medicines built into it. Actuators, not just sensors. Have you heard of actuators? Sensors will just sense and give the data. By looking at the data, if I want my stretcher to give him injection, I need to have an actuator there. I can give a command to actuator sitting in remote location and ask the stretcher to give him 5 ml some medicine. Are you there with me? So 5G is not built just for us. 5G is built for industrial use case. 5G is built for connected healthcare. 5G is built for connected agriculture. 5G is built for connected car. Just look at this. Connected car. Tesla comes to India. It will take some time to have completely automated driving in uh, India. Already in one way, two people, two way traffic is there. You can see all that, right? We need a disciplined traffic for connected car to work. What is connected car? Car is driven without the driver. Car is driven without the why we can't imagine all these things in India? We get drivers at low cost, so we don't have to worry. In other countries, they have to pay driver very high. Now they have to think of automatic. Even a big CEO will not have a driver there in various countries. They have to drive on their own. So connected car, all these things will sell in other countries because they have a challenge of manpower. Or it's a costly thing. So, automated driving, if the car does, I am happy to invest on that car. That is what happens, right? So, Tesla has done it in the US. What does connected car do? It monitors all the area like a map. It has camera built into everywhere, sensors built into everywhere. It will look at here and there. A dog is coming in between. It has to apply brake. So, it can do all that. One. So, for this, Oh, the car need not be connected on mobile network. But car needs to be connected on mobile network for a different reason. Today when I am driving as a human, if the first car is applying brake, let's say I am the fifth car in the signal, there is a red light coming in the signal, the first car is applying brake, I subconsciously, because I have been driving for some time, by looking at first car, I am applying brake here. Okay, by looking at first car, I am applying brake here. This is done by manually. Now think of automated car. The automated car which is going, if it is the fifth car, the first car could have sent in the signal saying that I am applying brake. Are you there with me? I am applying brake. The fifth, first car, how will it send the signal to fifth car? Not possible just like that. It has to be connected on the mobile network. And via mobile network, the fifth car is getting the Signal. So, when the first car is sending the signal to the base station, base station has to send that signal back to the fifth car, and fifth car should understand that the first car is applying brake. How soon that has to come? If there is 10 millisecond delay, I would have crashed the fourth car. Today, my brain is processing it by looking at that red. You know, when he applies brake, there is a red indicator. My brain is processing within one millisecond or two millisecond. Then we are doing it subconsciously. We are not keeping track of how far I am processing it. Are you there with me? But now we are expecting machines to do it. So 5G network is designed with five millisecond delay for such kind of thing. It is not because I am downloading one file. I need five millisecond, one millisecond. No. 5G technology is designed for what kind of applications? This kind of application. But Indian operators, all these technologies are not there in India. They are still selling 5G to people. They are still selling 5G to people. Basically, for them, the real revenue will come if they sell 5G to connected healthcare, connected hospitals, connected university campus, connected. If I have all the university connected, no need to take attendance. I know how many people have come inside the campus today. And again, if I build a smart system, I know how many people entered the class. Everything is connected. So the point is, in future, 
This looks like a fiction. This looks like a fiction. 20 years back, if I had told my parents that uh, one day I will be carrying mobile and I will do train ticket booking on my phone, I will do, I will watch marriages on mobile, they would have also told that is a fiction. But after 20 years, it is reality. What we are saying now could be reality after maybe 10 years. It will happen. Connected ambulance, connected healthcare, connected agriculture. So 5G network, 5G is expected to do all this. 5G is expected to do all this. Okay. So just to, I will take a break after this. Okay. Just to give you mobile network architecture, whether it is 2G, 3G, 4G or whatever. Mobile network architecture, this is the point where we are connected. Mobile to, mobile to base station. Beyond base station, there are so many things as I mentioned. Base station is connected to base station controller, some names they will give. Base station controller is connected to some switching centers, routing centers. And then finally, if we go to internet, YouTube, WhatsApp, Gmail, Facebook and all that guys are here. In the simple picture here, you may see from here to here, it may be around 40 kilometers. From here to here, it may be around 100 kilometers. From here to here, it may be around 200 kilometers. My WhatsApp server might be in Singapore or US. It might be around thousands of kilometers. But in one slide, we have fit this picture. From here, this all blue, whatever color, okay? After the base station, it's all optical fiber. No problem. No error. Quick transmission. Heavy data rate. No problem. The real problem is here to here. Once we reach the base station, from there everything can go quickly to the server because everything is optical fiber and connected. So the point is, <clears throat> all these servers are having fixed RAM, fixed memory, fixed uh, everything fixed, okay, up to 4G. If the number of users increase here under the base station, if the number of users increase here, all these guys will exhaust their capacity. Today, you buy a laptop, you say 8 GB RAM, let's say. 8 GB RAM becomes fixed. If you want to install some complex hardware with 8 GB RAM, if it doesn't work, can you make it 16 GB? Can you make it 32 GB? Can you make it 64 GB RAM for a short duration? May not be. So in mobile network, what we did in 5G, we said all these systems will not have any more fixed hardware. They will all be implemented on cloud server. So if I implement all these things on cloud server, cloud server, I can increase my, it has elasticity. I can increase my RAM capacity as and when I need. I can take it on rent from AWS, from Microsoft Azure, from Google Cloud, I can take it on rent. I change my configuration immediately. I say, oh, network is having more users. Let me increase my capacity. Network is having less users. Let me reduce my capacity. So it's like, you know, I used to give this example. One day in my house, I will have 10 guests. So I built 10 bedroom house. Because there will be 10 guests in one day, I am building a house of 10 bedrooms. Remaining days, it is underutilized. Why? Because as a, you know, um, we don't have flexibility to increase or decrease the guest bedrooms in our house. Right? Mobile operators used to build the network like that. They think when my, when uh, probably during some festive season, in Tumkur area, or maybe some event in Dalinga uh, Mantar, that much. During that time, thousands of people come. Hence, the base station covering that much area should use so much of, you know, should have so much of capacity. If they build the base station like that, maybe for 10 days in a year, that base station will be utilized fully. Remain in 355 days, that base station is underutilized. Operator is saying, I have made so much of investment in that base station, assuming so many users will be there in the heart. But it is only on certain days only that many users are there. Are you there with me? Where is the flexibility? Today I can build a two bedroom house and I can confidently say if 50 guests come, I have 
other places where I can book, uh, you know, rooms on rent and use it. Where will the operators go? If mobile operators like Airtel, Geo, if the number of users increase under a variation, from where will they get additional spectrum? Where will they get? So, all these systems in 5G has become <coughs> flexible. Very good. All these systems have become flexible. So, they have split into small, you know, units. So, what is the what time? So, we will have break for 5 minutes. And so, we will have a break for 5 or 10 minutes and yes. then come back. Okay. So, from now on, I will just talk about more about 5G, why it is basically, you know, some of the areas in 5G where cloud is used. All the red components here, it's all cloud. So, what we should know from engineering perspective, computer science, I will just give you some idea what kind of job roles are there in 5G. Ultimately, it is for us to be aware. I can't learn swimming when there is flood. You have to learn swimming now. When there is flood, you can survive. If I say, oh, let the flood come, let me learn swimming, you know the result. Okay. So, the point is, you know, there are some engineering subjects that you are all learning. What? So some of these subjects are extensively used in mobile networks. These are extensively used. Some part of the mobile network. Once we come back from break, I will talk about all this. Okay? Thank you. Yeah, we will break for 10 minutes and we will be back. Okay. So next it will be very important to know the different rules as I said. Okay, probably this session was too good. By seeing your silence itself, it says like how it was. Okay. Exactly for 10 minutes. And I hope all persons will be back. Okay. And have a break for 10 minutes and come back. Thank you. Thank you.
Anybody can say what is the difference between CTA, CDMA and GSM? Is 5G is using uh, GSM or CDMA? CDMA. What is the CDMA and what exactly the difference between GSM and CDMA? Code division, multi multiple access. GSM, GSM stands for what? Global system. M stands for what? Mobile communication. So which one you are using? 5G, GSM or CDMA? GSM, okay, still, even though sir said like the security is good in which one here, CDMA, why all over the world still they are preferring uh, uh, what uh, GSM itself? In China, we have only one network. We, in India, we have plenty of networks, uh, network operators, Airtel, Low Idea, okay, whatever Geo, everything is here. And just think of population of China, whatever it is here, they are using only one network. Okay, just think how much data will be stored every second. How many people? See, data analyst store is also uh, very important with this particular networking thing. See, if networking, whatever it is, if it is failed, nobody can survive at all. Mobile is not See how network is important. And can anybody say in this slide, what does PSTL PS stands for? Even though I am from CSA, I'm asking you, PSTL. Public switch telephone network, switching, routing, and all happens, right? Okay, what the uh, BSC and MSC stands for? Basic switching center and MSC stands for? Hello, Liliela, BSC. Okay, that is switching between your two antennas, whatever it is here. Yes or no? And what the MSC stands for? And what is this basic service set and extending service set? And what is this handover? So as sir said, like in 5G, the handover, whatever it is there, there is no handover at all. And the handover is nothing but what? Switching from one cell to other cell. There is to, uh, your call is to cut Allah. Whenever you change from one station to the other station. But now, there is a seamless connectivity Allah. Wherever you keep on roaming, there is no call cut at all. Or video call, whatever you are doing. Yes, so that is what the seamless connectivity handover switching from uh, what you can say is one region to the other region. So, well, is probably very important. Yeah, even electrical. See, the next station is very important to know like what are the different roles that are there for electronics or electrical or computer science. And it is making, even though like we are faculty, it is making us to sit and listen to the session. But few people have seen, few students have seen your. Uh, 
<laughs> okay, so I will not bore you now. Uh, quickly, uh, there were some questions. I thought it could be useful for all of you. See, when we have base station in rural area, base station wherever you want coverage for end user. We have a base station there. Do we have optical fiber in every location? Base station has to be connected to controller using optical fiber. Some corner, nook and corner, every village now we have base station. Mobile coverage wherever we go, we want. Right? But how do we connect that base station to base station controller for which is in Tumpur? Arsikere and so many other places nearby could be all those base stations are connected. So everywhere do we have optical fiber? What we use, wherever optical fiber is not there, if we have to connect base station to controller, we use microwaves. Microwave communication, do you have a subject? Microwave. Yeah, they are basically point to point transmitters. It's like two torch if you hold opposite to each other, you will establish a pipe. It's like that. So we use microwave transmission and reception to connect wherever optical fiber is not there. One. Second, the, as I mentioned, the, from base station to base station controller could be around 40, 50 kilometers. Then controller to, you know, the central uh, routing and switching could be 200 kilometers. And the internet world is somewhere else in the world. The blue color here, this one, it's all underwater fiber cables under the ocean submarine cables so from chennai to <coughs> singapore chennai to australia chennai to europe chennai to us it's all underwater submarine cables okay so there are teams that they work flat telecom cable and wireless tata communications uh, british telecom some of these companies have invested in underwater cables and they give it on rent for anybody. So all across the world, all countries are connected. So basically, all countries are well connected. We call world is flat. Boundary is just for political reason. Otherwise, it's all connected. Okay, all countries are connected using optical fiber. With the optical fiber, there is no more boundary for the world. It's just one world. Okay, we can access any server in the world on my handset in sitting in CID. We can access anything in the world, wherever it may be. I can access that sitting in CID. Right? That is the power of technology. So, uh, you know, all some of these things. So, here you see on the network side, behind, whenever if you are a prepaid user, when you make a call, should the network check, do you have the balance? Do you have the required balance with the network check before allowing you to make call? Oh, yes, it should, right? So there are some servers where your balance is stored. There are some servers in the network where your identity is stored. Who is this guy who is making call? So there are multiple servers on the network for various purpose. For various purpose. So those are all centralized devices. What we are seeing on a daily basis as users is base station. Okay, what we are seeing. So the real difference in technology is between mobile to <laughs> mobile to base station. It could be 3G. If I put a new base station here, it could be 4G. If I put a new base station here, it could be 5G. So as an operator, their investment when they, for example, Airtel, they upgraded from 2G to 3G. 3G to 4G, 4G to 5G, what they want? They want base stations. Some of these things, they reused it for 4G, reused it for 5G, that's all. Is that clear? So, this is 4G network. 4G network, if you look at, there is a slight change with respect to this is base station. You are all using 4G phone. I am sure all of you are using 4G phone, 4G base station, 4G on the back end network. 
Here, the picture what we are showing is not in this fashion. In a little different fashion, the base station is connected to components on the back side. One is router, one is database, checking whether the user is in the valid user. On the Airtel network, should I allow Geo to make call? On Airtel network, should I allow Geo users to make call? So on the network side, they have to cross verify who is calling. Who is this user who is trying to use my network? On the network side, they should verify. So there are databases on the network to check, oh, he is my user, he is not my user. He is a visitor from Bonn. From Maharashtra, people have come here. When Maharashtra people come here, their home network is not here. Here, some other network is there. These are all called roaming network for him. When he comes here, should I give him service? Should I, you know, not give him service? There are a lot of things that we have to do it in the network side. Okay. So I'm sure most of you have been using LTE and I don't know whether you have observed 4G plus or LTE plus on your handset sometimes. Okay. Advanced 4G networks have come now. Some of our handsets that we use can support advanced 4G network. When I say some of our handset, how many of you have really looked at handset specification when you bought? When you bought a handset, maybe through Flipkart, Amazon, or through some mobile store, you went and bought mobile handset. That mobile handset, what it supports, whether it supports 4G, 4G advanced, how do you identify you? Basically, basically there is a specification, technical specification on the on the mobile. What kind of antenna schemes it support? What modulation schemes it support? All these things it is there in. But normally, when we buy handsets, how many cameras it is supporting? Front camera, <laughs> selfie camera, right? All these things because. We don't look at this technology support. Basically, in LTE, in 4G itself, there are multiple versions. The latest version of 4G is called LTE Advanced Pro. Most of the operators in the world, there are about 1,000 operators in all countries put together. In India, four. Airtel, Geo, Vodafone, BSNL. If you consider all over the world, all countries together, there are about 1,000 operators. There are about 1,000 operators. Around 800 operators are currently on LTE Advanced. Around 800 operators are currently on LTE Advanced. That means their network is supporting advanced version of LTE. Okay? So on advanced version of LTE network, you can get up to 1 Gbps on your handset. Mobile technology, 30 years back, was developed to support 13 kbps. 1, 3, 13 kbps. Today, same mobile network is designed to support 1 gbps. From 13 kbps to 1 gbps, we have moved. Are you with me? So that is the evolution, that is the kind of things that they have done. How do I increase data rate? Just a quick question. How do I increase data rate between mobile and base station? What should we do? What should we do? Bandwidth. bandwidth. One is bandwidth. Bandwidth is now it is single lane highway. Let me make it two lane. Two lane highway. Let me make it four lane. Four lane highway. Let me make it six lane. This is visible to us. So we can clearly relate. Like that, 2G is single lane, 3G is two lane, 4G is four lane, 5G is six lane. Only thing is Bandwidth spectrum, what we are buying is a very costly thing. It's a very, very costly thing. Instead of widening the road from four lane to six lane, which requires more real estate, more space, I have to buy more land. Can I construct a flyover? Keeping the road width the same, can I construct a flyover to in increase the capacity of that road? Instead of widening this way, can I? China, you go four lanes, six, seven flyovers. 
because widening the road is a costly thing for them. They are already buildings are constructed. I can't, you know, demolish those buildings. In the given road bandwidth, currently I have traffic congestion. To release the congestion, I am not widening horizontally. What we have done? Construct more flyovers so that you can accommodate the capacity. Similarly, in mobile technology, from 2G to 3G, 3G to 4G, 4G to 5G, first, instead of increasing bandwidth, we found out other ways of increasing data rate. Can we change modulation scheme? Can we change antenna schemes? Can we change coding schemes? So there are multiple other ways that we tried to increase data rate, keeping the bandwidth. Very good. Keeping the bandwidth safe. Because buying bandwidth is very costly. So they tried to change all these things as we move on from 3G to 4G, 4G to massive antenna scheme, MIMO. Multiple input, multiple antenna scheme at the base station, at the mobile. When when uh, I used to use handset in 2000, 2001, mobiles had antennas outside like this. Today, mobile, when we buy, we can't see antennas outside. Okay. But today's mobiles normally have two antennas or four antennas on the four corners of the handset. They're all patch antennas. So I am not able to see how many antennas are there. For example, this Wi-Fi access point is a wireless transmitter. How many antennas are there? Two antennas are there. Why two antennas? Why two antennas? Earlier days, earlier days I had only one antenna transmitter. With one antenna, what all of us can get? Let us see if it is 100 Mbps. If I had to make 200 Mbps, I had to increase the bandwidth spectrum. They said spectrum is not available. To make it 200 Mbps, let me make two antenna transmission. This is called multiple antenna transmission scheme. Multiple antenna transmission scheme came in mobile, in wire, Wi-Fi routers first. If Wi-Fi can do it, why can't I do it on mobile network? So from 4G onwards, in base station, we may have, for one area, I may have two antennas. In the LTE advanced, eight antennas. Without increasing the channel bandwidth, without increasing the carrier bandwidth, in 4G advanced, we increase the data rate by increasing the number of antennas in the transmitter. If I have two antennas here, that is not enough. You also need to have two antennas to receive. Most of our phones, which are connecting to Wi-Fi, they are having two antennas. Most of our laptop, my laptop has four antennas on four corners. So if my router has four antennas, I, my laptop will tell the router saying that I have four antenna schemes. You can transmit four parallel streams for me. I can collect. But some devices who are having two, though it has four, though it has four, receiver will say, I can't take four, I can only take two. Then this transmitter will say, I will only transmit two to you. That will say, I can take four, for that guy, I will transmit four. That is how receivers will change from, you know, that's why when you buy handset, you have to look at what is the capability of the and said, how many antennas it can support? How many parallel streams it can support? That is how they increase the data rate. In 4G, LT Advanced Pro, LT Advanced Pro, 16 antennas, 5G, 32, 64, 256. In 5G base station, because you need GBPS, in 5G, 20 GBPS data rate, how do I give? Bandwidth, bandwidth will cost me. So what do I do? Number of antennas. Number of parallel transmission. It is like this. For example, you wanted me to only talk for one hour. But I have two hours until to tell. But if I have to talk for only one hour, how can I finish two hours content? Imagine I have two mouths. 
in one mouth what i had to cover in first one hour i am transmitting in another mouth what i have to transmit in the next one hour i am transmitting that means parallelly i am transmitting two streams of information you have two years in one year you collect from what is coming in one mouth in another year what is coming from another mouth you collect i finished two hour job in the problem today why i am saying this is the problem today is we can increase the number of antennas that is why they restricted only to two brain is only one between us though i have two mouth what should be transmitted in one mouth and what should be transmitted in another mouth that processing has to be done by the brain brain is only one though you have two ears you have just one brain i am asking you you process two separate things that is coming using one brain which means dsp dsp digital signal processing unit on that device and this device is only one otherwise they would have gone for so many antennas today we are restricting the antennas because dsp is conking off dsp is saying i can't do though on theory they are saying 64 antenna scheme who is collecting 64 on the other side my mobile device will conk off in half an hour battery will drain are you there with me so there are techniques to you know optimize these that's why all transmitters are saying if i go beyond two antennas four antennas dsp is a challenge dsp is it a subject digital signal processing on both the sides transmitters and receivers it is there that is the brain of transmitter and receiver that is the brain of transmitter and receiver are you there with me so there are changes in technology these things are happening okay so why 5g as i mentioned 5g is what see 2g 3g 4g these are all for us video voice not exciting for face link with something like that for it is connect it is for connecting people anywhere in the world you can connect that's all connect and talk share video see whatever is happening right that is the state of efforts up to 4g that is also a big achievement connecting to people 40 years back maybe 50 years back connecting to people how do you connect not even landline not even landline in 50 years what improvement we have done in communication space is unimaginable when i was born my father so they got a telegram no other communication today everything uh, you know that's all in 50 years we have done so much of uh, improvement in communications you know? today wherever you are in the world i can do live call so communication network has gone to one stage now in 5g they are saying connect everything to everything not just people connect everything to everything anything on the earth has to be connected so you can connect anything to anything that's the aim of 5g when i try to connect anything to anything now you have to make machine like people all the machines have to act like people artificial intelligence has to be there all machines have to be programmed maybe all these chairs will become smart in another 20 years see uh, chairs are there chair handle is there so if i have sensor i can have display on the handle saying that what's my weight what's my body mass index everything can be there in the chair so that details can be provided so i am saying 5G's idea is to connect everything to everything. To connect everything to everything, what is the aim? I want to sense something. Let's say I go to uh, when I was in Motorola Labs, five six hours continuously work on the system because when you get into a problem, till it solves, you don't want to get up. Okay. In two three years, I developed back pain and skip this problem. Okay, so I went to a doctor. Doctor said, uh, "Okay, maybe, maybe because he doesn't have proof. 
you are sitting for longer time you have to get up and walk or maybe your sitting posture is not correct this is just a guess maybe what is the cost no one knows today if i have a smart chair smart chair has all the sensors the moment i sit awkwardly it is giving me an indication saying that you are not sitting properly the the handle is saying that your posture is not correct because there is a sensor it is also connected to 5g network next time when i go to doctor oh yesterday you were sitting like this for 6 hours doctor is saying that yesterday i was sitting like that for 6 hours because why the system is connected to internet whatever i am doing is connected to internet they have the data to tell me today all water bottles have come with sensors connected water bottle what is connected water bottle if my, i bring water bottle connected water bottle okay the water i am consuming the quality of the water is sensed tomorrow i go to doctor say that i have cold doctor is saying give me the ip address of your water bottle i give i give ip address of my water bottle hey yesterday you drank this water that germ was there no guess work data is there every damn thing will have an ip address going forward that's why we need an ipv6 address we have to cover so many devices everything will have an ip address everything will have sensors who will do all this we have to do we have the youngest population in the world it is finally it is going to come to us saying that we have to do this for the world all other countries population has average age has gone beyond 40 who will do they are all in different stages of their life the youngest smartest workforce is in india whether it happens today or another 2 3 years or 5 years finally it is going to come to us it is our duty to do all this we have to do world will move on why to k problem during my engineering days why to k problem was there why to k problem is when the century was changing from 1999 to 2000 all the computing system in the world were not programmed for 2000 they were all programmed for 19th century or 20th century then the entire indian workforce was required to convert all the existing computing system in the world it was the only thing that they were doing so today if i have to connect everything to everything everything has to be computerized it should have some processor it should have some sensors it should be connected everywhere there will be some minor computing work to be done in every machine in everything are you there with me that is the role of 5g and it is connected and it is connected that's the point okay so what are all the things that we want to do in 5g not connecting people connecting people is over as i said nobody is buying sim card that business is no more exciting for airtel that business is no more exciting for jio for jio can i connect all the cars can i connect all the ambulances can i connect virtual reality i went to uh, 5g world congress recently in delhi one third semester student has set up a stall in that world congress third semester engineering student sir come sir come sit here and watch kedarnath he had a ar vr glass developed by him and i put that glass and he is saying you turn this side you can see this side of kedarnath this side of kedarnath he has set up everything in kedarnath camera and that camera is giving feed to this virtual glass so and it has the logic built into it if the user turns like this the data feed coming from those cameras are showing me this so it's a live thing are you there with me what exactly was happening in kedarnath i would i was able to see i was able to see on vr glass in delhi the only thing is 
those feeds should come without any delay if it has to be real time those feeds are high data rate because pictures it has to come okay what i could not feel what i could not feel i could see but what i could not feel huh? what i could not feel whether there are not whether i could not feel 6g's aim is to transmit that feeling sense those feeling and transmit so i you know i told my wife we will not go to europe trip now 10 years we will sit at home at, at home we will have ar vr glass gives you switzerland feeling right not just seeing switzerland it is also giving me the feeling of europe weather are you there with me virtual tour it's not just picture, it's not any more videos. It is also that feel which we want to sense in 6G. Capture that feel and transmit. How do we do that? For that, how my senses work. They are capturing that. Forget about voice call over. Are you there with me? So virtual reality, high speed train, I already said, remote surgery, factory automation. There's so many things in 5G what we want to do. But we are seeing in India, we are not seeing this. World is slowly moving, that's all. This requires computing at machine level, computing at agriculture level, computing at healthcare level. This requires hardware, software, engineers everywhere. Hitachi. Is doing an experiment in Dodbala. Okay. They are doing e-agriculture. E e-agriculture, they are, you know, soil testing it does. It checks the water level in the soil. Because earlier days, we used to just water the plants. Oh, once in two days, you have to water the plants. Once in two days, you water the plants. Does it really require? Is the soil, does it really need water now? We don't do all that. It's not a scientific approach. Now it's all scientific approach. You just sense the you know soil quality. You do all that, and then you do right. So so many players are now e e you know e agriculture, smart grid, stadium, so so many things. Five G is expected to connect every damn thing in the world. Anything that we see. We should be able to think that it should be now having computing capability, connectivity. So these are all 5G's expectation. What do you expect in 5G? Call should not drop. All the time network should be available. I should not get network busy. Not. You should not get network busy. If you get network busy, which means network is not built properly. In 5G, this is what we expect. No more call drops. Reliability. Latency, one millisecond. This is all expected in 5G. This was, this target was given by ITU to those who are developing 5G, saying that I will call any technology as 5G if we meet this. I will call any wireless technology as 5G if we meet this. What means? It means no more call drops. No error at all. I can lose one packet for 10 million packets. When I transmit 10 million packets from mobile to base station, I can lose one packet. If I lose more than one packet, I will not call that as 5G. That's what they said, reliability. Like that, see, one thing is for sure. Whether you are interested, whether you are not interested, there are set of people in the world, they will continue to innovate. There are set of people in the world who will continue to challenge what is there currently and see what improvement can be done. If we want to catch up, we can catch up. If we don't want to catch up, we can still don't want to catch up and do what we want. The point is, we are all here in college campus with an aim of getting into a job. Our ultimate, maybe majority of us, at least myself, I went to college to get a job. If your aim is also like that, then you need to see what areas. I can tell you this particular field, 
I also didn't know I happened to join this field. It gives unbelievable salary. You can't imagine if we know the subject well. It it is that's one of the measure that we all have for success, right? We think high salary is very good. So if that is the aim, we should also put effort. It cannot just happen when we are sleeping. We have to put our effort, saying that okay. Let me try for a job because tomorrow, as I said, we can't learn swimming when there is flood. We will have to get ready and understand. So 5G, traffic volume, availability, cost, cost is also, we want to keep it very low. These are all the targets for 5G. Mobility speed, 500 km per hour we should support. All kinds of, uh, you know, errors that can occur, we should manage. See, there are always problems. We have to find solutions. Technology has done that. 5G, there are three services. Main three services are there in 5G. In 5G, there is one type of service meant for people. 5G, there is another type of service meant for connecting machines. In 5G, there is another type of service meant for connecting critical devices, robots, healthcare devices, connected cars, they are all critical devices. So, 5G serves three areas. One, people. For connecting to people, we call it as mobile broadband. Enhanced mobile broadband. That service is categorized as enhanced mobile broadband. You can watch 8K video, AR, VR, under this service, EMBB, enhanced mobile broadband. In 5G, another service is called massive machine time communication. All machines will be connected under that. So imagine I am a base station. When I connect to people, the way I operate with people is different. The same base station, when it is connected to car, when it is connected to that uh, smart gloves of ambulance, the way I operate is different. Same base station, same tower. When I connect to connected car, factory automation, the way I operate is different. It's like I'm a chameleon. I change my avatar when I'm connecting to people. I change my avatar when I connect to, and it is not changed separately at the same time. So 5G gives three different types of services and their performance requirement, everything is different. So the same network, same 5G network behaves differently. Same 5G network behaves differently for people. Same 5G network behaves differently for machines. Same 5G network behaves differently for something else. How can I bring this flexibility? Not through hardware, through software. A lot of things, it's a combination of hardware and software. Embedded systems, software changes, software defined networking. So many things are there. Are you there with me? So, what is this ultimate thing? You know, you, we can't learn this in two hours. It is a continuous process. I can only create awareness. That's why the heading of seminar is awareness. Okay. There is a free 5G course given by Qualcomm. I will log in and show anybody in the world can subscribe to it. You, there are two courses that cost 69,000 if somebody buys in the market. Qualcomm has given it free for faculties and students of universities. Anybody can log in and learn from basics what is frequency, what is bandwidth, from there they have covered. Okay, I will show you that. So these are all some of the things that they cover in that. So 5G means there are Consumer users are there. There are other things that we are talking in 5G. IoT, various things that we want to do within 5G. Okay. This is the market scenario. This is 5G clear network. This is the network Airtel or Geo. What we see is base station. Base station is connected to 5G phone. Beyond the network, there are so many components in 5G. They are all implemented on cloud. They are all software defined. They are all small, small programs, applications. On my mobile phone, you have WhatsApp, you have YouTube, 
on my mobile phone so many app right like that on the 5g network side behind your base station they have a server on that server like many applications these are all required for 5g to operate all those applications are developed they are all implemented on a cloud server so 5g network you know user base station and then after that we call it as core network broadly we call this as radio network we call this as core network that's all in any mobile network base station part is called radio network behind base station is called core network core c o r -E, core network so all the core network is completely cloudified complete cloud based entire 5g core network is application based it's all application small small applications on the server one will do user checking another will do user balance checking another function will find out where is the user in the network another function will check whether he has crossed 2 gb per day should i now bring it to 512 kbps another function will check how fast he is moving like that there are many functions in the 5g network which will do one by one verification of the user when there is an incoming call to you network should see where is he in the network at five o'clock you are not in this campus you are gone home so network should not search for you network should find out where are you so there is a function there which will keep track of every user access and mobility function amf in every mobile network it will be there you keep moving without the you know without the knowledge how the network is tracking you network knows exactly where you are you may not be updating handset is updating the network i am here i am here i am here that's how the network knows where the mobile is are you there with me so but as a user i will keep the phone in my pocket and go phone is maintaining continuous connectivity with the network and updating hey i have moved from here to here i have moved from here to here that data network has to store where is the user so that whenever there is an incoming call network exactly knows where the user is are you there with me like that so many functions are there so in whenever we talk about 5g in 5g there are so many new techniques that are implemented in 5g we have machine learning ai mobile edge computing i will come to it radio network this radio network whatever i say base station this is cloud based core network is cloud based so for radio network we call it as cram software defined networking all the network functions are virtualized have you heard of virtualized one laptop can it act as two machines can one laptop hardware can it act as two machines can you implement linux and windows on one laptop that means a laptop is acting as two machines for you one is acting as linux machine another is acting as windows you can act in, you can make it as three machines the hardware resource of the laptop is shared so that's called virtualization virtualization of the machine a uh, windows machine is different linux machine is different associated with the same hardware like that in the mobile network they will have one hardware they will have one hardware acting as different different system are you there with me that's called virtualization okay so they use network function virtualization so there are a lot of areas to work one last thing about 5g network is 5g network as i mentioned can act as multiple different networks one network can act as multiple one laptop can act as multiple machines like that one mobile network can act as multiple mobile networks everything is virtualized so complete network is software defined complete network is virtualized we call that as network slicing we call that as network slicing we slice the network we slice the network and say airtel network can act as 10 networks actually one airtel 5g network can act as 10 5g networks one network will take care of agriculture another network will take care of people another network will take care of connected car another network will take care like that so that is 
basically software based 5G network. So to do that, you leave, see basically 5G started in 2018 in uh, in US, a operator called Verizon started this. Initially, they all started with just EMBB service. 5G can act as three service, EMBB, MMPC, URL, and CC. Initially, most of the operators in India also, they are just offering only 5G for people. The network is not ready for 5G for machines, 5G for other things, they have not upgraded. They are still in 5G for people, okay? So, there are a lot of things coming up in the future. So many things are expected to happen on 5G. So, what subjects we should be aware? I'll talk about it. What subjects we should be aware? So, 5G, if you have to work on 5G, 6G going forward, computer science, is it applicable to computer science? Yes. Is it applicable to electronics communication? Yes. All these guys who are studying engineering, for them 5G is, you know, area where they can get a job. What subjects? These are all different branches. See, people can become a handset testers. Whether handset is working as per standard. System integrators, can I connect base station and core network functions? Can I do all that? Whether the base station and mobile is working as per the standard protocol testing, product developers, you know, IP networking engineers, there are so many options in 5G. Today, what is happening, this awareness is very, very less among student community, among educational community, because software industry is where the masses are hired. This is a specialized, this is a very specialized field. Unless you go to companies and say that I am teaching all these things to my students, they won't come. We have trained more than 75,000 people in last uh, 12 or 13 years, not by going to campus. Ericsson says, I will go and hire, you train them. They go, hire, get the student to their office and we train them. We have interacted with more than 75,000 students. What they, what they used to do, because they knew that these technologies are not taught in college, what they used to do, we used to go and have traveled across all universities in India. Silchar, Kashmir, any place you say, we have gone there to teach. What they do, three days training they do, and then they take a test to see who are really interested and who really listen to this. It is not a test for job. Basically, they used to test to see who has interest in this subject after three days training. In that, they used to pick oh, 40 students out of 200 or 400 pick 40 students and then train them and then offer them a job. Okay, this is what they used to do. Now, a lot of companies are doing that also. And another company, which is a US based company called Dish Network Technologies, they are also, you know, planning to expand. So many companies are there in India who are planning to expand because ultimately for doing all these things, they need people. And in other countries, it is very costly. First of all, there are no people, very costly. So for doing all this, what I need to look into some of the subjects, engineering subjects, if you want to work on radio side, on the base station design, chip, Qualcomm, MediaTek, Samsung, if you want to work on these, some of these subjects, you know, chip side is antenna propagation, digital communication, electronic circuits, electronic field theory. If you are very good in this area, you can look at building career in that. If you want to build a software part of the mobile network, look at Linux. Linux, there is no Windows, forget about it. Windows is not at all used. What we use? Linux and Linux. Only these two operating system. Embedded system, C++, these are all some of the technologies that we need to be aware if you want to get into 
okay software side if you want to go on the router switches core network side beyond base station how does they are connected optical networking microwave cloud computing switching routing concept i am sure you have computer networks as a subject right computer networks these are all will give you an idea of how these networks are interconnected how this routing switching works all these are part of it so these are all the subjects anyway i can i have i will share this with you you can share it with students i just want to show you there are two courses offered by qualcom if any of you are interested to study more beyond your subject you can look at that and then i will close so you have to go to qualcom academy you know they are the number one in the world okay in wireless communication qualcom academy if you go to qualcom academy you can anybody can visit qualcom academy courses and programs you can see there is one university program okay if you go to university program qualcom academy if you go to university program There is one free 5G course here. You free courses. You can look at it. They go by get the data quickly. Yeah, IG University program. Can you see? I have come for you, so you have to listen at least last five minutes. Okay. See here, Qualcomm Academy is excited to offer students free 5G courses. They are able to read that free 5G training and opportunity to receive 5G certification. Certification they charge for pro metric test, guys. So you don't have to certify yourself. You can just go through the range. If somebody wants to do certification, they charge about two thousand four hundred rupees as a test charge. Some third party will do the certification. Okay, you don't have to do. But if you have Qualcomm certification worldwide, you can show and Qualcomm certified. That's up to your choice. Okay, but courses are free. You don't want to write exam, you can. That is, there is no reason. See, free five G training. There are 5G primer and fundamentals of mobile communication two courses are there. Both together takes 10 hours. It's an online training. The moment you click that, it will ask you to register. You give your college name. You give your if you have a college email ID, you use. If you don't have college email ID, use your personal email ID. In one minute, they will send you a coupon code. Say that you the buy the course, use this coupon. When you buy the course, course will show sixty nine thousand. But when you apply coupon, it becomes zero and allow you to use the course. One year you will have access. In one year, if you can find ten hours to study what they have, instead of watching some series, maybe it will help you to get a job. Also, we don't know. Okay, it's like having a joker card. You don't know when it will come to use. When you play it, right? So you can use you if you are interested. My job is to create awareness. I have done my job. I am happy. I will happily go back. I have told you. Now it is up to you to take it forward from here. Okay. So there are two courses: five G primer and fundamentals of cellular to cover overview of five G, how it works, how it is transforming the way world operates. Both courses are taught through an e-learning format. There is a somebody like us. Somebody is teaching. That is being recorded. There is a digital board. All that you go through it. You, if you are curious, you find out more. And it's a good course, very good course. So we have all. Before I tell you, I should also go through. No, I have gone through it. Everything is very good. So you can look at it. Even faculties can go through. Okay. Further, 
once you are done, you search on online 5G jobs, you search, you tell, when you apply, you say, I am 5G, I know, then you will be separated from the rest of the crowd. Otherwise, worldwide, so many, I, in our company also, when I give uh, one requirement, thousand people are sending resume, who will you choose? Everybody wants a job, but there is only one job, two jobs, so many people. How do I differentiate? You can't just differentiate based on marks. We'll have to look at who is keen, who is understanding, all that. Okay? Any questions you can ask me, I will be happy to address. I think that's what I wanted to convey in this session. You can, uh, I'll be happy to address anything. Any, any questions? From anybody, just raise your hands. So it was an eye-opening session for all those who want to take the career in telecom industry. Sir, expertise in telecom industry, and this session was clearly explained, and it was so interesting to know the clear architecture of your mobile network, whatever it is there, and how the evolution of 6G. So thank you so much for your time, sir. So it was a really wonderful session. The architecture of 5G. The evolution of 5G and what are the subjects you need to uh, study for different roles, whatever it is there. Not only electronic, electronics and electrical, even computers and students. So I request everybody to give it a big round of applause to. Sir, thank you so much, sir. So the days will come will be some more session for. Uh, they are final students, so it, it is better like for juniors, they know they'll pay a career. Sure. Thank you so thank much, sir. Thank you. Yeah, regarding your placements, like uh, you have test right? So exactly by two o'clock you meet uh, CB sir, like near to auditorium you go. Overall attending placements can go to.